archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. Cruising through a mangrove forest like the Bhitor Konika and the Sundarbans, one has to watch out on either side. Who knows what may appear suddenly on the banks? There it is, making its way gingerly through the network of branches, is the huge monitor lizard. The jungle fowl screeches in panic and flutters away, and well it might. It was about to make a good lunch for Mr. Lizard. Fish, fowl and snakes are welcome as food, and he does not mind even bigger creatures. Monkeys and deer cannot be easy when he is in the vicinity. One may even mistake him for a crocodile. Everyone gives him a wide berth, except maybe the large predators. He's as much at home in the water as on solid ground. Winter is the time for sighting crocodiles, but we wanted to find out what they did in summer. So, another cruise through Bhitor Konika the search continued for a few days. We were rewarded with the sight of a few crocs. This one was hiding in the bush. Perhaps the noise of our engine made it feel a little insecure. There is something funny about the crocodiles. Try taking a good look at them. Not easy at all. They are a clever, slippery lot the slightest sound and they dive under. You keep still and watching. If you're lucky, a thorny back may be found floating just on the surface. But you try to row to have a closer look and plop, it goes away. They don't like noise at all. The unsuspecting crab was spotted long ago. 
the crocodile came through the water silently, approached within inches without any noise, and then snap, escape, chase, snap again, a quick meal. and then the slide back into water. Even crocodiles are sometimes poached. The forest ranger of Bhitar Konika explains. The crocodile cases are very rare. And nobody dares to kill the crocodile because of some vigilant stuff are alerted for fish. We have put some mechanized boat as well as some dinghies, and in the periphery of these forest areas, we have stationed some deep headquarters for which the staff get immediate information to control over the situation. Watching from close quarters, you have the impression that crocodiles enjoy their watery abode thoroughly. Baby crocs found abandoned are looked after by forest workers in Bhitar Konika, but only females. They are given water to swim in, a place to rest. They are released into rivers when they are six months old. Until then, they are washed and fed with great care. They are released into rivers when they are six months old. Until then, they are washed and fed with great care. A bite would, however, require a series of injections to heal. Several hundred young crocs have so far been released into the wilds. The workers looking after them enjoy their job. It is satisfying, they say. <laughs> Another important part of their job is to take care of sick crocodiles. We witnessed an operation. This crocodile is not well. He is snared, pulled up from the water and washed. Yeah. 
ऊपर उठ के उठेला हम सही तो दवा खा जाता ओ अच्छा अच्छा तो अब आशीर्वाद हो जाता तो ताको छाती में की दाला बोल कुछ ना कर तो हद में कर दे We are in Assam, ready and out at four in the morning. The area belongs to tigers and rhinos. You will see a tiger if you have tiger luck. We are told by Mr. Naik, our guide. Suddenly, he signaled. Yes, he's there, Mr. Royal Bengal, in full majesty. He walks unhurriedly in and out of cover. We should make a move now, says Naik. The place is no longer safe for us. We shifted to Nongun Kanon in search of the white tiger. A long search, and then suddenly he is there. But he does not look as menacing as his coloured brother. There is something benign about him, isn't it? Is he a little down in the mouth because of the confinement to a zoological park? We can only speculate. Nandan Kanon has the unique distinction of breeding a large number of tigers, both normal and white in its open-air enclosures. The first time two normal tigers gave birth to three white tigers was in 1980. The parents were not related to the white tigers of Riwa. Since then, many more white cubs have been born here. Some of them were sent to other zoos in India and abroad. Here is what Mr. B.S. Prushti, the former DFO, has to say. You see, anything different is liked by all. That creates fascination in the mind of people. So also white tiger. The white color is different from the normal color. That is how it has attracted the attention of one and all. Uh, for your information, Nandan Kanan got the first white tiger out of normal color types. Thereafter, the population of white tiger has increased, and we have got the highest collection of white tiger in the country, maybe in the world. Now we have got 30 numbers of white tiger. Regarding this white tiger safari, you know, people are very much interested to see from a very close quarter the white tiger to watch to observe the animal, how it behaves, 
and all that. In case of zoo, what happens? The animals are kept in the cage and the visitors are free. But in case of a safari, it is just the reverse. The visitor is caged and the animals are left free. The sight of a tiger makes us think, what is the animal's future in India? Perhaps it has been here for 2,000 years, but for how long more? Being solitary and cunning by nature, it has survived the depredations of man for long. But now the threat is real. Nandan Kanon is also the home of several lions which were brought here from elsewhere. A few are quite old and take things easy. The rest seem to be enjoying themselves. Both the Indian and the African subspecies of lions have been exhibited and have been successfully bred in Nandan Kanon. The Asiatic lion, which was once widely visible in the entire north of India, is now confined to the Gir forest in Gujarat. The Indian lion has a denser coat and a pronounced belly fringe. Tufts of hair on the elbows and on the tip of the tail is longer. As man looks for more space, the space for animals keeps shrinking. Others inhabit many parts of Orissa, but they are difficult to spot. They go out very early in the day, accompanied by the young ones, carrying on with their fishing on the edges of the water and crawl back into their holes. We decided to go out at dawn one day in search of them in the Bhitturkonika jungle. Torches were flashed into the likely places close to the river. No effort was spared, but to no avail. The occupants were just not there. No reward for the peeping toms.
Turtles visit the coasts of Orissa seasonally from faraway areas in order to lay eggs. Thousands of tiny ones burst out of their shells every year from where their mothers carefully tucked the eggs away in the sands. But bad times have come. Poachers, riding launches, do their rounds at this time of the year, killing them by the hundreds. This is yet another tragedy happening silently by the sea, an assault on the wealth of Orissa's wildlife. North Bengal is a land of many rivers. These provide the animals with much needed drinking water, but create problems for the traveler. Occasionally, flash floods sweeping down the hills endanger the fauna. In North Bengal, the leopard, like the elephant, is also creating problems because man has created problems for him by felling the trees in the jungle. They make forays into villages and deliver their cubs in tea gardens. Often, they have to abandon their cubs when they are chased by people. Some such cubs are being reared at this center. The local DFO explains. There we rescue the leopard cubs. Leopards are bringing to us in the forest, in, as in us. Most of the forest is disturbed. And they got the good cover for giving birth to their cubs in the nearby tea garden. And if in a, any area where the leopard is giving the birth of the cubs got disturbed, then the, they left the cubs. And when the tea garden managers inform us, we used to rescue the cubs and keep the cubs there. And we used to rear them. And after some period, we used to give hunting practice. And they were reintroduced in the forest of the Yellow Valley. 